So this is typical final exam question on um, friction. And in this problem, we have uh, two bodies interacting. So we've got this lever that pivots around point or hinge A, pin A, bears down on this disc that has uh, a moment applied to it, tending to try and, to try and rotate it uh, anti-clockwise about pin O. All right, so we're told that we've got this force applied down here, P. Uh, we're given some information about the coefficient of friction between the drum and the, the so-called brake bar. We're told the applied moment and we want to determine the smallest force that needs to be applied to the brake bar in order to stop this drum from, rate, from rotating. Okay, so pulling down here, trying to stop this from rotating. So it's just a very simple, simplified brake system. So uh, also asked to determine the corresponding horizontal and um, vertical components of the reaction at pin O. And we can neglect the weight and thickness of the brake bar and the drum has a mass of 25 kilograms. Right, so if we think about our solution, we need to usually draw free body diagrams. Okay, so in, in this case, when we say draw a free body diagram, we need to say, or think about which bodies we're going to draw free body diagrams of. We could draw the whole system, um, but if we did that, so if we drew a free body diagram of the, the drum and the brake as just one whole free body, right, we'd have pin connection here, pin connection here, so two unknowns here and two unknowns here. Right, so four unknowns plus our unknown force here. So that's not going to help us very much. Right, so what we will do is to draw separate free body diagrams, draw a free body diagram of the drum and a free body diagram of the lever. And then we've got forces of interaction between the drum and the, the brake lever or the brake bar. And so I'll have our normal reaction forces plus a friction force. Okay, so um, draw our free body diagrams. And then once we draw, when we draw our separate free body diagrams, we apply Newton's third law. So that's considering the fact that we've got equal and opposite action reaction pairs at this contact point here. Okay, so similar to what we did with frames and machines where we separated the two members, where there was a pin joint and we had on one free body diagram force components that were equal and opposite to the force components on the other one. Right, so we'll need to do that here as well. So then we can write our equations of equilibrium for each of our free body diagrams. Now, because we've got friction, we need to make some assumptions about whether uh, the two surfaces are about to slip or whether they're nowhere near slipping or whether they've slipped already. Okay, and that will determine what form of, um, or whether we can use the friction equation F equals mu n, because that equation, friction force equals coefficient of friction times the normal reaction force or the normal force is only valid at the point of slipping. Okay. Or in kinetic um, problems, if it is slipping. Okay. And then we use the kinetic coefficient of friction. So then we can apply our friction equation if we assume slip or at the point of slipping and solve for our unknowns. Okay, so start off by drawing our free body diagram. So just start with the bar. So we've got uh, a load applied there. Doesn't really matter. We could have start with the drum as well and work from the drum up to the, the bar. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so we have our applied load. In fact, I've kind of done both at the same time. So uh, drawing my free body diagram of the drum and I put the applied load there as well. So in this case, the applied load is this uh, moment or couple or torque, if you like, acting on this drum. If we look at the free body diagram of the drum here, so thinking about our friction force, 
So the force of friction always opposes motion or impending motion. So if we've got this moment here applied, about 0 0.0 on the drum, tending to rotate the drum around anti-clockwise. So this friction force here that's applied by the brake bar will tend to oppose that motion. Okay, so you can see hopefully that the friction force needs to be acting to the right to oppose this moment or this impending, mo uh, impending motion. All right, so then we can put the equal and opposite friction force up on the, the brake bar. Okay, so remember, applying Newton's third law, uh, the force up on the brake bar must be equal and opposite to the friction force down on the drum. If we're looking at our free body diagram here now of the, the brake bar, we're pulling this down over here and the drum will be pushing back up on the lever to hold it in equilibrium. Okay, so normal reaction force NB acting upwards on the lever. And then we can put in the equal and opposite force acting down onto the drum. All right, so what else have we got? We've got, uh, we're told that we've got the weight of the drum or the mass of the drum is 25 kilos. So we can put that load or that force acting. And then we've got the reaction forces from our pin support here at O. So this drum is sitting on an axle pin free to rotate about that so we have reaction components in the x and y directions All right so i've put them so at x i've put acting to the left All right so i've determined that because i can look at my free body diagram here and say okay how many other forces have i got acting in the x direction and the only other force in the x direction is the friction force so therefore I consider some of the forces in the horizontal direction equal zero, or in the x direction equal zero, then R OX has to be acting to the left. Um, looking at the vertical force ROY has to be acting up because we've got NV acting downwards and also the weight acting downwards. As usual, if you get the, the sense of these uh, wrong, They'll just come out negative in your algebra and that will indicate that you've got the sense shown in the wrong uh, shown the wrong way on your diagram okay so and then just to complete our free body diagrams even though we're not asked for the force at a uh, we can put those in i can see you just asked a question there so i'll just come back and answer that in a second so i'll just firstly put these on so at a we've got pin force at a reaction force at A from the pin support. So in the horizontal direction, uh, let's look at what other horizontal forces we've got. The only one that we've got is the friction force acting to the left. So therefore RAX must be acting to the right. And RAY. Um, so we've got other forces in the vertical direction. So we've got force B acting upwards and the force P acting downwards. So we can't directly use some of the forces in the vertical direction to work out the sense of RAY. But if we took moments about point B, just thinking about it in our head, take moments about point B, the force P would be tending to rotate this anti-clockwise around B. So therefore we need RAY to be acting downwards to rotate it clockwise. Yeah, so the question was um, I've shown here ROX and ROY, are they the reaction forces yet? So because this drum is sitting on a pin, right? so if this wasn't on a pin and we push down here, then the, the drums is gonna fall down. Right? It needs to be held up somewhere. Okay, and because it's a pin, we have the two force components. From the free body diagram of the drum, so now if we look at our, um, before we, jump to this part. So if you look at all of our unknowns, we've got quite a few. So depending on how 
well you can think through the problem just in your head before you start trying to solve things. You can start with one or other of the free body diagrams that will give you an answer to something straight away. But if you can't do that, just, just start anywhere uh, and you'll end up with equations with some unknowns in it uh, and you'll just have to number those equations and then uh, refer to them and substitute from one to the other or solve or come up with a set of simultaneous equations and solve using uh, Kramer's rule or whatever. Okay, so, um, so I'm looking firstly at the free body diagram of the drum. So I can see here if I'm applying this moment here, then the only other force that causes a moment about point O is my friction force. Okay, so I can solve for that friction force straight away because I'm given uh, the moment as part of the, the given information. Okay, keeping in mind that we're heading towards trying to find our unknown here, force P. And so if we tried to find that straight away by doing, applying our equations of equilibrium for the, the lever, right, we could take moments about point A, but we have friction force as an unknown and the normal reaction force as an unknown. Okay, so we're not going to be able to get P straight away. We have to get some other things first. Okay, so looking at some of the moments about point O, taking anti-clockwise as positive, we can see that the friction force will be M divided by, uh, it should be 0.125, uh, put it in metres, let me just fix that up. Okay, so that just comes from uh, the moment here, the moment here will be equal to friction force times the perpendicular distance, which is 0 0.125. Okay, and I've just to save myself a bit of space on the page, I've just gone straight to F equals M over 0.125. Okay, so the other thing that we said is in order to calculate our friction force, or to use the friction equation, we need to assume that the drum is about to slip, right? which is consistent with what we're asked for in the question. Okay, so we're asked to determine the smallest force P that needs to be applied to the brake bar in order to prevent the drum from rotating. Okay, so stationary, so you can imagine we're gradually increasing this moment um, until we get to 35 Newton meters. And what force do we need to stop that from rotating? Okay, so assume the drum's about to slip, we can apply our friction force equation F equals mu NB. So we're told that the friction coefficient is 0 0.4. We have F, the friction force from up here, so we can now calculate our normal reaction force. Okay. So once we have F and N subscript B here, then we can take moments about point A and solve for our unknown force P that we're trying to calculate. Okay, so just redrawn my free body diagrams on my next page. Um, carried over the work that I did before. So the friction force, if we now put in the, the values, is 280 newtons. And from the friction equation, we can calculate our normal reaction force. And that's 700 newtons. Okay, so we've got these two forces now calculated. F and N subscript B. If we take moments about point A, we can calculate P. So let's do that. So from the free body diagram of the lever, or the brake bar, some of the moments about A equals zero. Just quickly looking at this. So we've got P times one, so 0 0.3 plus 0 0.7 perpendicular distance of P from A. And then we've got the force N subscript B tending to rotate clockwise, tending to rotate, rotate the lever clockwise about point A. So if you push up on here on the lever, that will tend to rotate around this way. So clockwise, so that's negative. And the friction force here, its perpendicular distance is 0 0.5 tending to rotate around this way, around point A, so tending to rotate anti-clockwise, so that's positive. 
So they're the only forces, three forces causing a moment about point A on the brake bar or the lever. So we can set that all equal to zero and calculate for our unknown force P. So just substituting into here, right, from what we had here, and into here from what we had up here. Okay, so that gives us a force of 350 newtons. So that's the minimum force we need to apply to prevent the um, thing from slipping. Okay, so we're also asked to calculate the reaction forces at point O. So we can do that. I think actually I'll do the reaction forces at A first. Yeah, I'll do. So just for completeness, um, we can apply the equations of equilibrium to the free body diagram of the lever and calculate our reaction forces at pin at A. So the sum of the forces in the X direction equals zero. We only have RAX and the friction force. So that's pretty easy. So the RAX is equal to the friction force. Some of the forces in the vertical direction equal zero. So we have RAY, the normal force NB and our applied force P. So we can solve for RAY. And now if we look at the free body diagram of the drum again, we calculate our reaction forces ROX and ROY. Then some of the forces in the X direction equals zero. So here we've got again only two, that's F and ROX. And then looking at some of the forces in the vertical direction equals zero, we have ROY, the weight of the drum and our NB normal reaction force. Okay, we can put that in and calculate that unknown. Great, uh, and that's, that's it. That's the end of the problem.